Jimmy Muyaha on SAFM. 2024 is a milestone year for a number of reasons. It is 30 years of democracy in South Africa. It is also 20 years of the existence of the National Empowerment Fund. And I thought it would be interesting to reflect on the developments and achievements of the NEF up to this point. I'm joined on the line by NEF's acting CEO, that's Mziwa Bantu Diamani, who's going to just give us a sense of how the business has performed and where we stand with the NEF at the moment. Uh, good evening, Mziwa. Thanks so much for taking the time. Let's start by reflecting on the 20 years that have been. It's been a significant milestone to, to achieve and 14-odd billion rands worth of projects or transactions across 1,600 transactions is quite a significant achievement to get to at this point. Thank you very much, Jimmy. Um, so the NEF is a development finance institution with an exclusive mandate of facilitating broad-based black economic empowerment. Since inception, we've supported uh, about 1,603 transactions and to the tune of 14.3 billion rand. That's the amounts that we've approved. And of that 14.3 billion rand, uh, we have dispersed into the economy about 9.6 billion rand. And that's the money that has gone to the beneficiaries. So we're very excited about what the organization has achieved to date. 9.6 9.6 billion is quite an impressive number in terms of disbursements. And we'll dig into uh, the NEF's mandate in, in a second, Mziwa. I want to just look at some of those transactions. You said 1,603 transactions at about 14.3 billion over the last 20 years. It averages to about 700 million rand or so odd a year that is being looked at or that is being financed and agreed to. What are some of these significant transactions that or notable transactions uh, that you guys have been a part of? Yeah, we're very excited, for instance, about one of the transactions that has won the the Black Industrialist of the Year um, award uh, last week, which was awarded by President Ramaphosa. It's called Motlalefi Engineering. It's a business that actually uh, supplies the roof uh, structures, roof support structures for underground mines. So it's got uh, cutting-edge technology that has been found very useful by the mining houses. So we support that kind of innovation and technology. Another one, uh, notable one I can mention, we've got a transaction uh, called Busamet, which is a group of doctors that we funded to establish a healthcare uh, sector business. They've got hospitals. There's one in Motorfontein. There is a cardiac hospital in Strand in Cape Town, the Gateway Hospital in Durban. They've got hospitals in Bumalanga and the Free State. So we supporting um, industrialists and we also support SMMEs. We've got, for instance, over 100 service stations or petrol stations across the country that we have supported in rural areas, in townships, and also in urban areas. Yes. Mziwa, when you say that the NEF as a DFI exists to uh, advance uh, a lot of transformation type of transactions, how does that work in terms of the criteria that is set out from a business perspective because we've definitely seen of late that there's been a lot of questions that have been asked around uh, things like the uh, BEE policies that uh, we have in place as a country. Where does uh, the NEF fit into uh, this from a transactional point of view and how do you assess your transactions? So the NEF, we fund everyone. We fund uh, any uh, black person that comes uh, to apply for funding. Uh, black being uh, African Indian and colored people. So we focus on the commercial viability of the transaction. We set ourselves apart from the normal or traditional financiers in that we're not looking for own contribution from the people that we fund. And we also take more risks. The person does not need to have collateral. And we would fund any business that we believe that has got uh, economic uh, merit. We fund in a variety of sectors. And we fund at various stages of business. We would fund startups, we would fund existing businesses, and we would fund expansion businesses. So we look across the board as an organization. We've funded, for instance, transactions 
in the property space, in the tourism space, uh, particularly uh, rural tourism. We funded affordable housing and student accommodation, the agro, agro processing and energy transactions. So we, 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 we fund across the board. We've got very concessionary terms. Our interest rates are substantially lower than the commercial banks and we're a patient lender. We call ourselves a funder with a soul because we provide the business space in order to generate sufficient revenues until such time that they can repay us. We look solely on the business concepts for repayment to the organization. Mm. Mziwa, how do you manage the aspect of the assessment criteria? More often than not with uh, DeFi's and uh, other organizations, it's nice once you have qualified for the funding, but the qualification criteria um, is always a stringent criteria. And we know that South Africa as an environment or as an economy is a very unique kind of uh, space for entrepreneurs and for businesses that want to be funded. Um, How do you make sure that from a, a, a criteria point of view, as you said, you fund anyone that has the ideas, but how do we get to the point where we know that these criteria are not exclusionary criteria yes indeed that's a very important uh, question jimmy so the nef uh, if you go on to our website we've got what is uh, called the business planner tool because as you know uh, one of the first documents that we would ask for as a funder is the business plan we prefer entrepreneurs who've worked on their business plans themselves, who know their business plans, who understand their concepts. Because at the end of the day, we want the person that we funded to run their businesses. We fund entrepreneurs and uh, we, we don't necessarily support passive investors. So we spend a lot of time uh, with people who don't necessarily have the business uh, plans, assisting them to put together those concepts and also ensuring that they refine them such that those become economically viable. Because at the same time, we don't want to set people up for failure because if not enough time is spent um, assisting them up front, then we might end up with a business concept that is not well thought through and then which might lead to a lot of frustrations for the actual uh, entrepreneur. We don't want to de-empower, we want to empower the people. So indeed, someone might interpret that process as being red tape or taking too long, but it is necessary uh, in order to make sure that there is sustainability at the end of the day. Some of the entrepreneurs, they come to us having done all of that work, in which event those entrepreneurs, they will take shorter time in order to get to a point where they get approval. Um, So we've had transactions that we have approved and finalized within a period of uh, three weeks, and some of them will take uh, a month or two because of the steps that need to be taken before we get to the point where that one is ready for commercial um, assessment and approval. If you're just tuning in, we're in conversation with the acting CEO of the National Empowerment Fund, Mziwa Bantu Daimani, around the Empowerment Fund's successes over the last 20 years as they reflect on celebrating a 20 years in existence. Mzio, I like that you brought up that timing issue because the website, uh, the NEF's website says from application to disbursement can take four months. And that is a a considerable length of time when we think about the state of businesses in South Africa. Many of them need financing quite urgently and assistance quite urgently. And it's a a very different conversation between now and four months from now as to what's happening with the economic conditions that we deal with in South Africa. So it's nice to see that um, from a timing perspective, four months is not the minimum time that the business can uh, go through. Uh, There can be a a bit of a a streamlined approach from that perspective. I want to look at the training and seminars aspect and the the, the ongoing involvement. I mean, it it goes beyond the financing. As you said, uh, preparing entrepreneurs and preparing businesses um, goes into a lot of, a lot of that goes into happening ahead of time so that when you do then disperse funds or in the process of dispersing funds, we ensure that there's uh, proper support for businesses. Mm. Indeed. 
So we uh, support uh, training and development um, as an organization. We do what is known as community engagement. That's part of the cornerstone of what the NEF does. Uh, Thus far, we've done about uh, 9 million training seminars, and we've reached people in villages and townships throughout the country. Um, we've been to about 772 communities um, and our seminars, they, they focus on various topics that are related to investments. We, we teach people about savings, the investments, uh, aspects of financial discipline, um, how they can actually access the markets, which is one of the key aspects when someone wants to run a business. We empower communities to make informed financial decisions. We've got transactions where we would actually put together structures within communities and then we'll get communities being involved in projects like agro-processing. And we actually help those communities in order to access support from the NEF and also they access the grants that are available within government so that they can actually become self-sustainable and they are able to make sure that the people within those communities, they regain their dignity and they can also earn a livelihood from those enterprises. Speaking of earning a livelihood from uh, the initiatives that the NEF puts forward, Mziwa, do you feel that the NEF is doing enough at this stage? I don't ask this because it's an election year or anything of the sort. I ask it because we have a 50, almost 60% uh, youth unemployment rate and we have more than a 30% unemployment rate at a headline level. So clearly there is a need for development within the country. And I know that NEF as one organization is limited in its capacity, but do you think that uh, $14 billion over 20 years is enough or could you be doing more? Well, Jimmy, we could do more, but uh, as you would know, what we can do is limited by the resources we have. So the NEF, uh, we've been self-sustaining over the last few years. In other words, we depend on the investments that we make and we collect those monies and we reinvest them. Uh, and we actually assist government to roll out a number of empowerment initiatives. So. I'm proud to say that of all the resources that we've received, we've managed to deploy all of them. So what that means is that if we were to actually uh, manage to raise more resources, we would be able to roll them out. So uh, indeed, I also get heartbroken when I look at the unemployment situations in South Africa. And I believe that um, uh, organizations like ours have got a very important role to play in ensuring that we bring that human dignity to the people of South Africa, which is why we actually put all our energy and we use all the resources that we have. So on an annual basis, we make sure that all the resources we have, we deploy them into the economy for transformation of the economy, for job creation, and also for rural and other community benefit initiatives. Speaking of uh, being involved and being invested uh, at this stage um, and and being responsibly invested, I think it's also impressive to note uh, from an NEF perspective that you have managed to achieve 19 consecutive clean audits. I know there aren't many government departments uh, or government entities that can say that uh, with pride and it's it's something that's worth noting uh, as well from an NEF perspective is not only is the deployment side of it a priority but also uh, the transparency and accountability that comes with it. Indeed, uh, we, we are a state-owned entity and we, we are accountable and we always present ourselves to all the various structures. So governance is key for us, which is why we always ensure that we maintain the, the clean external audit uh, opinion. Uh, our books are open, they get scrutinized on an annual basis. And we ensure that we provide all the necessary information for us to be to be held accountable to that. We are accountable to the people of South Africa. We are accountable to the government, and we are also accountable to the public at large. So, 
it's important for us to make sure that we always keep that clean governance uh, record for the organization. And also, uh, in terms of the funding that we, we lend, we've been able to get it back. Of the money that we've lent out, the 9.6 billion rent, we've managed to collect about 5 billion rent uh, back uh, from our clients, which means that our client base is repaying the money. We're not just uh, lending money that, that, that gets lost. We lend, and then we collect, and then we recycle the funds. So it's key for our sustainability and then making sure that the reputation of the organization is kept at the highest level. Well, we'll leave it at that. We'll reflect on this in another 20 years, hopefully, and we've achieved more <laughs> milestones from this one. Uh, we'll leave it at that. Thank you so much. That was Mziwa Bantu Daimani, who is the acting chief executive officer of the National Empowerment Fund, joining me to just reflect on 20 years of the NEF. Hi, my name is Karel de Acher, and I'm the research group leader for distributed ledger technology.